Hello everybody and welcome back to Amazing Animal Inc's YouTube channel. Today we're in our reptile house and we're going to focus all about our reptiles here at Sanctuary. I'm pretty excited because I'm going to put Brian to work helping me clean all the reptiles. Those are his favorite. So we're going to clean some waters, make sure we got poops picked up, uh, maybe give a couple of them some mealworms. Like Ooh, mealworms. yeah. And I'll take everyone out and kind of explain who they are and why we have them. Um, Kylie's not her favorite thing to deal with my snakes and my reptiles, so I will be doing a lot of this vlog, I guess, by myself. So yeah, here we go. Woo. Alright guys, so we're going to start off with some of our reptiles here. Believe it or not, Amazing Animal Inc. started off as a reptile rescue over 10 years ago. I had um, people just kind of kept giving me reptiles and giving me reptiles. And at one point I had about 20, 25 reptiles. My roommates were all like, Brian, your room is full of reptiles. I'm like, I know. Everyone just keeps giving them to me. And um, I started a 501c3 shortly after that. And I just to do birthday parties, maybe go to some schools, um, just to generate some revenue to pay for my hobby of keeping all these reptiles and then one thing led to another and we grew up this huge place but anyways we're going to start with probably one of the favorite snakes that i have and she's probably one of my favorite snakes because i actually caught her in the everglades this is the elusive the crazy, you hear about them in Florida, those huge Burmese pythons that are taking over the Everglades. Me and my friends, we go herping down in South Florida and we find invasive reptiles and we take them out of the environment and we find homes for them. This was the first baby Burmese python we ever caught. So I had to keep them and we use her for education and we bring her out to meet a lot of kids and talk about the Everglades and invasive species here in Florida. And you can see she's hiding right here. So you see her little head? She's like, hello, I see you. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna grab her here. I usually go a little bit behind her. So this is Glades, short for Everglades. And when we caught her, believe it or not, she was about a foot long. Try not to get a bunch of mulch in the reptile room here. And Glades eats frozen thawed rats. Um, we uh, had to tell our Florida Fish and Wildlife officer that we found one and we had to kind of list her on our inventory. We have a special permit to have her. Um, we actually have a couple others back there, some big ones. We'll get to them in a little bit. But um, not everyone in Florida can have these guys. This is the third largest species of snake in the world. Like I said, she's only about a year and a half old now. Um, she was born two Augusts ago. And um, she will get to be about 13, 14 feet and weigh about 150 to 250 pounds. And they're, normally they are from Asia. And Hurricane Andrew, back in 1994, took out a facility and about 100 to 150 Burmese pythons, African rock pythons, anacondas, really big snakes, escaped and they thrived down in South Florida. Now there's, um, depending on what you listen to and who you believe, there are hundreds or hundreds of thousands or thousands of these guys in the wild. There are a lot of them and they do damage our native ecosystem. And what that means is they're from Burma in Asia. They eat really big rodents. There's a lot of animals for them to eat there. And here in Florida, there's nothing that eats what these guys eat, all right? The biggest snake here in Florida is about six foot long. When you introduce a 13, 14, 15 foot snake to our ecosystem, that really disrupts the balance of the ecosystem. So the moral of the story is if you have animals like this, you have to have them set up in a very secure location, in a building, um, with locks on, we lock all of our exhibits. Um, and when there's a hurricane that comes through, they actually go in the house. We, we bring them, we triple bag them. We put them inside of a bag, inside of a case, inside of a locked room with hurricane shutters inside the house um, to make sure if there's any damage to the house, so the structure, that these guys will not escape. Now, um, there are a lot of stories out there that you hear these guys can take over Florida. It's simply not true. These guys can go to about Miami and that's it. 
anything north of Miami, it's gonna be way too cold in the winter. They will normally die. So please don't believe that they're gonna take over the whole Southeast United States. That cannot happen right now. Uh, these guys are way too um, susceptible to the cold temperatures that it gets. Even here in Central Florida, we get into the 30s a couple nights throughout the winter, and these guys would die, unfortunately, because of that. So. Um, they can survive in the Everglades really well in the Florida Keys, but other than that, um, do your research before you get a pet. Don't get a pet that gets 13, 14 feet. It's probably not a good idea. And uh, yeah. So we're just spot cleaning, picking up little pieces of poop in the exhibits here. Um, we do a full deep clean about every other two or three months where we change all the mulch. Today, no need to do that. I'm actually looking for my lizard. I don't know where my lizard is. So we will find them. This is a mangrove monitor. So it's one of our bigger lizards that we have. Super fast. This is our mangrove sure. monitor and they're native to Northern Australia, Papua New Guinea, and they're one of the water monitor species, and he's almost full grown. This is a male. This is about as big as he gets, and this was one of the first little monitors they ever took in, and um, I kind of hand raised him a lot, spent a lot of time with them, build up a lot of trust and relationship with them, but this species of monitor, um, I wouldn't say makes a good pet because monitors are very hard to keep, but it is one of the smaller species of Rannis monitor. So they're not the most terrible pets because they don't get huge. Hey, big guy. You gonna go back? Oh boy. So next we have a really cool species that's native here to Florida. Um, we have needle, short for pine needle, and this is our pine snake. And there's pine snakes all over Florida. Um, and they live in the grasslands. They live in the pine flatwoods. Hi, Needle. And this is one of the snakes that we bring to our Florida native show in schools here. If you let go of the cage, I can get you out. There you go. Um, and we got Needle when he was a little guy. And he's grown up quite nicely here. Um, he goes to all of our shows because we do a Florida native show and this is a great Florida native snake that not a lot of people actually see. Um, they only have about four to eight babies at a time and they're reptiles so they lay eggs and um, their habitat is really fastly diminishing. So due to a low output of babies and habitat destruction, there's not a lot of pine snakes left in Florida. In fact, the state of Florida Fish and Wildlife has protected these guys. Now, we don't have to have a permit for him, but we are on a restriction, meaning we can only have two snakes on this, two pine snakes on this property because two people live here, which Kylie and I live here. So only two, one snake per person, per household, um, and that's so that way people aren't going out and taking them all out of the wild. But pine snakes are really, really cool. And we're just gonna clean up his poops real quick and make sure he has some nice fresh water. So we have Ka. And Ka is a jungle carpet python. And we got Ka from a Amdesi Day. And Amdesi Day is a really cool event that happens um, by the Florida Fish and Wildlife. And basically, anytime anyone has a pet, it can be a tiger, it can be a leopard gecko. If you have a pet in the state of Florida and you don't want it anymore, you can show up to an Amnesty Day event. They're hosted at different locations every year throughout the state. And you can get rid of your animal, no questions asked. You can't get arrested, you can't get in trouble. People drop off venomous snakes, people drop off pigs. Um, people do drop off big cats, small cats, um, so just not cats and dogs, it has to be exotic animals. And we feed all of our animals inside of their habitats. Um, so this one, he is a little uh, cage aggressive, meaning that every time you open this door, he thinks he's getting fed. So I use a snake hook, I gently get him out, once he's out, he's perfect.
Good boy. Good boy. Come here. Let me support his whole body here and get rid of the snake hook. Alrighty. Let go. He's holding on to the hook. <laughs> Alright, so this is my buddy Ka right in the face. Whoa. So Ka, like I said, is a jungle carpet python. He was actually really good. I probably could have grabbed him without the hook that time. But um, it looks like he may be about to shed. Um, he looks a little dark. He looks a lot brighter when he sheds. But another um, Australian animal, Papua New Guinea, Australia, carpet pythons. They're, he's about full grown. He's almost eight and a half feet long. Um, super cool snake. Probably gets a little big for a lot of people as a pet. Um, he was dropped off at the amnesty day. He was a lot smaller than this. He was a lot skinnier actually. Um, and since we've had him, he's put on a lot of weight. He looks really good. I like to bring him to shows. Kylie, she he kind of intimidates Kylie a little bit. He's kind of a lot to handle. Um, and when he gets done, he's done. He doesn't want to be out anymore. Um, so he's quite funny, very big personality. A lot of people don't realize that snakes have super personalities, super individualistic. Um, every single animal, I work with them a little bit differently. I know their temperaments, I know what sets them off, and cause none the exception. He has his own little funness about him and personality about him. I've never been bit by him and I want to keep it that way. So, but yeah, he's a pretty awesome dude. And let's clean out some of his poops and change up his water. And then we'll keep going. Red. A little Colombian boa, red tail boa. Um, a mix of a boa, who knows what localities. Um, red is very important. Red was an um, animal that was born here at the sanctuary. And I rescued both of Red's parents. Um, we had two boas, probably... 15 years I've had each of them um, and it was Rocky and Noah, Rocky Boa, Rocky Balboa and Noah the Boa are his mom and dad and they were snakes that I had for a super long time. Um, when we were very first starting out they did hundreds of thousands of shows with us um, and we never set them up for boas you really have to um, cool them off, heat them up, cool them off, heat them up, keep them separated, put them together for them to breed. Well, we never really wanted boas to breed, but we just had Rocky and Noah living together for years, years. We've never even seen them lock up, no breeding activity. Um, and one day we walk into the reptile house um, in, when it was in the other building and we were like, what is all that? It looks like just sacks of, of goop everywhere in the cage. And Rocky had 16 baby boas. Um, so we kept one. This was the prettiest one that I liked the most. So I kept it. We found homes for all the other ones. Um, like I said, we don't really try to breed them. Um, not something that we really want to do. It was kind of an accident. But um, I love this snake because two of the snakes, his parents, are the snakes that we started the rescue with. And they just mean a lot to me. And we did a lot together with those snakes. So it's kind of a cool generational thing. This is a snake that we'll never ever be able to let go of or get rid of or find another home for and she'll be here forever because it's parents were some of my favorite snakes and first snakes that we rescued. Where are you going? They want to see you. They want to see you on camera. They want to see you. I love my little Randall, the blue tongue skink. He is a pretty cool little guy, and he loves to hide in the black back corner behind his little plant. <laughs> and he's actually shedding a little bit right now, too. What is that, Randall? So blue tongue skinks are native to Australia, and he is one that I take out all the time for our program, sometimes for our groups that come to visit, uh, because he's got a great little personality. He is still growing, he's about a year old, maybe a little bit more than that now. Um, so he's gonna get almost the whole length of my forearm here. And they can live about 20 to 30 years. So someone had got him when he was a cute little baby, uh, didn't quite realize he was gonna get big and live almost 20 to 30 years. And so we got asked to take him in, so he does all the, the programs with us. And blue tongue skinks, they get the name from having that blue tongue that they have because it's a defense mechanism. So in the wild, bright colors like blue will actually mean danger or poison. And he is neither of those, but he wants to act poisonous so no other animals think about have, having him for a snack. 
And I always tell the difference between poison and venom. A lot of people get those two things confused. Venom, uh, we do have some venomous snakes in Florida. They're going to bite you and inject that venom into you. Poison, like what Randall wants to act like, means that you'd have to eat it and ingest it, and it's going to upset your stomach. So he doesn't want other animals to eat him and tries to act like he is poisonous. So he'll flash that bright blue tongue if he feels threatened um, or just explore with it. And he'll just hang out. He does eat a little bit of everything, so he's an omnivore. He'll eat fresh fruits and veggies, mealworms, eggs, uh, you name it, they'll kind of forage on it. And everyone always thinks he looks like a snake, but he is not a snake. He's got arms and legs and little ears. I don't know if you saw the holes on the side of his head there. Those are his ears so he can hear you. And snakes actually don't have ears. They also don't have arms and legs. So he is in the lizard family. <laughs> We have our big Burmese pythons here, uh, Louise and Queso, and they are albino Burmese pythons, which is the lack of pigmentation. The so blades was a normal color pattern, whereas these guys were actually ex-pets. Some people breed them for fun colors and uh, will sell them as pets. Now, Brian was saying, uh, explaining about glades, that Burmese pythons are actually legal as a pet now, so we get con uh, contacted by our Florida Fish and Wildlife Officer to take them in since we do have permits to have them. These guys were confiscated, unfortunately, from people who did not have the permits. holding but she is probably pushing 40 pounds right now so she is a lot to to take out and handle she could almost knock me over if she really wanted to so when you uh, handle a big Burmese python like wild ones in the Everglades uh, they are very powerful snakes so we actually have to put danger danger dangerous reptile just because of the pure strength that they have they're not a venomous species but they are very powerful but okay so again we've uh, handled a lot so she's quite comfortable and yes, this is the Britney Spears snake, everybody asked that. She had an albino Burmese python during her VMA performance. <laughs> oh my goodness. Whew. So Louise is looking beautiful after she just shed. So they've got beautiful bright color. And let's see, since they are albino, I don't know if you guys can see, they have a a little bit of the red eyes as well on them. <laughs> she, like, you just woke me up from my nap. She was one of the first Burmese pythons that we took in. I remember when she was probably this big when we got her. That was a few years ago. So she's doing great, comes out for a lot of programs. Hi. And snakes can smell with their tongues, so she's just kind of checking things out. But they do get along too. We always ask people, have people ask us, oh, do they get along? Can you have them together? And clearly they don't really bother each other. Uh, there are some snake species that will actually eat other snakes, but Burmese pythons don't do that so they can be housed together. Yeah. Guys for watching our vlog today. I got Fuego here. He's a little bearded dragon. Um, he's a rescue pet that we have. He's about five years old. And this is Turbo, our little red-footed tortoise who is probably about three years old. Nice. And what's really cool to me is we started out this animal rescue um, really with reptiles. Reptiles is where we started and it's kind of grown into something so much bigger, so much more. Um, so please, uh, you know, find your passion, find what you love, and it may take you into new directions and new things that you never thought were possible. Yeah, we love the reptiles and all the animals that we've been able to take in over the years and educating people all about how to properly care for them and to do your research before you get pets because a lot of them can be a little bit more work. Yeah, so uh, if you guys like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, make sure you like it, leave us some comments, and go out there and do, do something, something amazing. amazing.